Within the field of evolutionary biology, the theory of signaling studies communication between individuals of the same species, as well as across different species. The key inquiry centers around scenarios where certain organisms, especially in the context of sexual selection, might opt for honest signals instead of deceitful ones. Despite having conflicting interests, various mathematical models shed light on how such signaling could constitute a significant part in an evolutionary stable strategy. The main instances of signaling occur in situations like mate, selection by females, placing the male's signaling activities under evolutionary pressure. Consequently, signals evolve as they influence the receiver's behavior for the benefit of the sender. These sender these signals could be genuine, containing information that positively affects the receiver's fitness, or they could be deceptive. Any individual can trick others by presenting dishonest signals, which might momentarily serve them, but risk destabilizing the signaling system for the entire population. The controversy surrounding whether signal selection operates at the organism or gene level, or at a group level, has witnessed debates among prominent biologists like Richard Dawkins. He argues that the evolution of individuals to improve signaling and signal reception, including resistance to manipulation, in contrast, Amat Zahavi proposed that cheating could be restrained through the handicap principle, where the best performing horse in a race carries the largest weight. This principle applies to male peacocks who boast large, showy tails which are honestly signal and are difficult to fake, thus making the system evolutionarily stable, however. Efforts to confirm the handicap principle haven't yielded consistent results. In humans, similar mechanisms are expected, and researchers have examined behaviors encompassing risk, taking in young men and engaging in expensive religious rituals. These activities seem to serve as genuine signals that come with a cost. The dynamics of mating partner selection in animals, where traits such as signaling are subject to evolutionary pressure, offers a case in point. For instance, when the male gray tree frog vocalizes a call to attract mates, female's choice leads to the propagation of that specific calling style, indicating that the signal can vary in characteristics, such as intensity, variation, repetition rate, etc. Multiple hypotheses attempt to explain why females prefer one call over another, including the sensory exploitation hypothesis and the hidden preference hypothesis, suggesting that calls that align with hidden preferences in females are more successful. It's observed that both senders have developed multiple sexual displays and receivers have evolved multiple trait preferences. The narrative primarily focuses on animal communication, more specifically on the phenomenon of signaling and its honesty in animal kingdom. As creatures elude their predator's attention, both the predator and the prey develop a shared objective to conclude the hunt, allowing the prey to resume activities like feeding. Family ties or kinship also play a critical role in communication, especially amongst relatives within the same species, such as the instance of fledgling birds seeking and vying for food from their parents. The term honest signals, while contentious because it suggests intention in everyday language, is used statistically by biologists. Simply put, if biological communication methods such as alert calls or vibrant tail feathers consistently provide beneficial information to the recipient, it is considered honest. The information being signaled does not need to be entirely accurate, but merely needs to be generally right in order to be beneficial, thereby encouraging behavior that is advantageous that is advantageous on a statistical basis in comparison to conduct absent of signaling. One form of honest signals is seen in the sexual selection within species, where one sex advertises, usually males, their genetic quality, while the other selects, usually females, the highest quality partner. Since this quality is unobservable, the advertising sex evolves a signal, such as the tail of a peacock or colorations in male sticklebacks. These signals must be trustworthy to work and often depend on environmental conditions. Other honest signals include aposematic warning signals given by hazardous or poisonous creatures, such as wasps, pufferfish, and poison dart frogs. These signals honestly represent the creature's toxicity. Thus, the more visually prominent the creature, the more toxic it generally is. Some creatures may evolve to mimic these signals to scare off predators, Batesian mimicry. However, this results in an evolutionary arms race with predators learning to discern real signals from fake unfakeable honest signals are reliable and therefore evolutionarily stable as they cannot be faked without exceeding the benefit they provide. At the core of animal communication, systems lies an intriguing conundrum of truth and deception.
This is due to both shared and conflicting interests among the animals. For instance, a foraging bird might send a false alarm as a precautionary measure. Although this would be considered as cheating, however, frequent cheating could lead to communication breakdown, thus compromising the survival chances of the group. Fiddler crabs, for example, bluff about their potential for combat a crab with a regrown, albeit weaker, claw might successfully intimidate another crab with a smaller but stronger claw. Such deceptions are minimal, making it inefficient for the crabs to challenge the integrity of every signal through combat. Richard Dawkins and John Krebs in 1978 proposed a critical view at this aspect of animal behavior. They brought forth the concept of selfish gene, suggesting each species behaves in a way that maximizes its propagation. Contrastingly, they criticized the like of Nicolaus Tinbergen and Desmond Morris, who viewed such actions as being for the good of the species E. These deceptive signals could be used within and between species. A classic example of deception between species is mimicry, where one species impersonates another. This could be in the form of certain ants mimicking others, ant mimicry, or males or females of a species aping the patterns and behavior of the opposite sex, as seen in the bluegill sunfish. Drawing parallels from the world of sports, an intriguing model for understanding these signaling systems is a Mats Zahabi's idea of the handicap principle. Football races level out disparities between horses by adding weights to faster ones. Thus, correlations emerge between handicap performance and the handicap level, like in amateur golf where better players have fewer strokes deducted from their scores. This is akin to animal signaling systems, where deception might play a vital role. But ultimately, the correlations are found between signals and their corresponding quality. The core concept of this narrative demonstrates a relatable form of wisdom that was embodied in Kurt Vonnegut's 1961 dystopian tale, Harrison Bergeron. The unique society presented in this story sustained equality through administering various restrictions to lower inequities and capabilities from observing a ballet dancer. It was apparent that her burdens were far greater than that of others, attesting to her unparalleled strength and elegance. This scenario was interpreted as a depiction of superior peacocks, flaunting their larger tails as a show of their ability to deprioritize certain expenditures in favor of heightened display, aligning with Veblen's concept of conspicuous consumption and ostentatious status symbols as indicators of wealth. Although Zahavi's interpretation initially drew criticism from evolutionary biologists, Nur and Hassan demonstrated the potential equilibrium of a signaling system, setting the levels of survival. Reduction trade-offs, as described by Zahavath through life history theory in 1984. Later, genetic models indicated this was plausible, and Graffin showed how the handicap, like signaling system, if received lower survival costs from better quality signalers, could maintain stability in 1990. Hamilton proposed a typical yet broadly applicative assumption of parasite-mediated sexual selection in 1982 suggesting that sexually selected signals reflect good health amidst continuous co-evolution of hosts and their parasites. This hypothesis was validated in barn swallows in 1994, wherein the extended tail feathers in males and their lineage led to fewer blood-sucking mites, reinforcing Hamilton's theory. Meanwhile, Lozano's theory on the dual but conflicting roles of carotenoids in immune functionality and signaling indicates that animals able to afford to waste carotenoids on sexual signals are actually compromising their immune system. Testing the handicap principle empirically has been challenging due to unclear understanding of Zahavi's metaphor and Grafen's marginal fitness model, coupled with inconsistent empirical findings, with some studies suggesting that bigger signals carry larger costs, while others suggesting smaller costs. Challenging the claims made, the highlighted model isn't an epitome of wasteful handicap signaling as per Grafen's crucial equations. Those equations largely portray the indispensability of marginal costs and differential marginal costs, but nowhere does Grafen explicate the necessity of a wasteful equilibrium cost or handicap. Instead, Grafen's model is more accurately described as a condition, dependent signaling system, constructed upon a traditional life, history balance between survival and reproduction. Many succeeding models have shown honesty in signaling is crucially dependent on the existence of such a condition-dependent trade-off. Notably, the cost of signals for honest individuals at equilibrium can be any value, including zero or even a negative figure. This is due to cheating being deterred by the potential cost of dishonesty, rather than the costs borne by honest individual. 
such a potential cost, marginal cost, must outweigh the potential, marginal, benefits cheaters could gain, suggesting that an honest deer or peacock need not be wasteful, but efficient. On the other hand, the potential cheater stands to be less efficient, rather than being a selection for waste as a hobby stated. Signal selection operates under the same mechanism, natural selection, as every other trait in nature. Studying how costs limit an honest relationship between observable signals and unobserved attributes within signalers involves strategic signaling game models, typically applied to sexually selected signaling in diploid animals. Often overlooked, though, is the early 20th century insight from mathematical biologist Ronald Fisher. When preference genes associated with female selectiveness and signal genus related to male display traits coincide, selective females tend to mate with more flamboyant males as generations pass. Males may become increasingly ostentatious. A process known as Fisherian runaway Russell Landy investigated this using a quantitative genetic model to show Fisherian diploid dynamics being sensitive to signaling and search costs. Later, models combined both costly signaling and Fisherian runaway to show fitness outcomes depending on both survival and reproduction. Thus, having sons who are attractive and daughters who are selective can be just as evolutionarily advantageous as having healthy offspring, further proving its adaptive nature. The colorful display of leaves during autumn is theorized by Sam Brown, W.D. Hamilton, and Marco Archetti to be a signal emitted by trees towards pests such as aphids. The production of such vibrant red and yellow hues is an energy-consuming process for the trees. However, this visual warning system could be instrumental in reducing parasitic infestation. This protective signaling is also evident in Thompson's gazelle's starting behavior, or the chemical signaling through faces in Hamilton's frog, both acts communicate their size and strength, warding off predators and rival competitors. Such costly signaling extends to human behavior too, providing insight into a person's health, strength, or willingness to cooperate. This theory finds proof in various aspects of human interactions such as risk, taking behavior, hunting, religious activities, and even food sharing among hunter-gatherer societies. Understanding costly signaling is crucial, especially when delayed reciprocity fails as a plausible explanation for it. Instance, when a hunter shares his game generously with a large group without expecting a return to display his strength and accrue social respect, however, this approach also gives rise to free riders who benefit from group activities without contributing. This explains the seemingly wasteful and altruistic behavior among humans as having a reputable reputation could aid in securing mates and allies. For costly signaling to function effectively, it must adhere to certain criteria. The costs and benefits relative to the signaler's health or strength should differ additionally. The signal should be aimed and apparent to a certain audience, such as prospective mates, allies, or competitors. Only high-quality individuals who can manage the demand costs of signaling assure this honest communication. The narrative suggests that motivations other than energy gains drive men to participate in turtle hunting and spear fishing. Further research indicated that skilled Merriam hunters enjoy superior social and reproductive success compared to their less proficient counterparts. The Tanzanian Hadza community also practices food sharing, likely as a measure to boost reputation. Hunting and sharing meat are unlikely to be aimed at providing for their families or to fuel reciprocal benefits, especially as young, unmarried males often participate. Therefore, these actions are most likely expensive signals of their quality traits, such as excellent vision, strength, knowledge, stamina. Encourage hardworking and fertile women tend to pair up with Hadza hunters. Women who mate with men who possess these traits stand to benefit as their offspring, might inherit advantageous traits that improve survival odds additionally. High social status offers added benefits. Thus, hunting is a pricey but genuine indicator of phenotypic quality Frank W. Marlowe's The Hadza. Hunter-gatherers of Tanzania presents data confirming this drawing from Megan Beasley's documentation of the Kung in the book Women Like Meat. The expensive signaling theory is also demonstrated in the torch fishing practice among the men of Ifaluk Atoll. This ritualized fishing procedure, which involves the use of coconut frond torches to catch big dog, dew-tooth tuna, is a substantial commitment of time and energy. Despite resulting in net caloric losses, it serves as a handicap signaling productivity torch fishing is the most broadcasted fishing activity on Ifaluk, 
accompanied by local customs that highlight successful fishers and improve reputations. On Ifaluk, women seek tirelessly working partners, making industriousness a prized male quality as such. Torch fishing offers credible information on prospective mates' work ethic, making it a trustworthy yet expensive signal. In numerous human cases, positive reputation garnered through expensive signaling boosts a man's societal rank above less successful signal bearers. Among the foraging groups of the northern Kalahari, seasoned hunters typically catch a maximum of two or three antelopes annually for one notably successful hunter. It was said, in the pursuit of a suitable spouse, many women favor men who are skilled hunters, having a pleasant nature, considered generous, and boast positive social associations. A man's hunting prowess often determines his readiness for marriage, giving skilled hunters an early entrance into the marital pool. This relates to the costly signaling theories, which elaborates on the idea of surplus or wasteful displays that serve as signals of one's capability to endure physically straining and risky situations. The study of such physical risk-taking tendencies is crucial as it can contribute to developing preventative measures against high-risk activities, often undertaken by young males. These activities range from notorious incidents involving life-threatening reckless driving prevalent amongst young Western men to voluntary but risky blood donations. This analysis also extends to behavior seen in criminal circles or gang affiliations. Risk Taking signals may expedite acceptance into these perilous groups. A man who endures risk is projecting his strength and survival skills. A signal absorbed by peers or potential partners risk. Taking behaviors, however, are received differently based on their intent. For example, heroic or altruistic risk. Taking tends to be valued more positively than involvement in harmful activities, such as drug use. The appreciation for different types of risk also differs by gender. Males tend to value heroic risk, taking amongst peers but prefer less risky behaviors in their female partners. Conversely, women value risk, taking tendencies in their male partners but not among their female friends. This may be attributed to women being attracted to males who are willing to physically protect them and their offspring, just as men may appreciate risk, taking male allies. Blood donations, while a lesser form of risk-taking, highlight the costly signaling theory. Despite the associated pain and infection risks, blood donors are often perceived as healthy, generous, and capable of handling stressful situations. Similarly, costly religious rituals, although seemingly maladaptive and paradoxical from an evolutionary perspective, may demonstrate intra, group cooperation, and loyalty. Such public performances may deter free riders by demanding high personal investments thus. The costly signaling theory can offer explanations for amplified religious behaviors. According to a self-reported survey, higher levels of church strictness directly correlated with increased attendance and contributions. The study suggests that stricter demands and expectations may indeed foster a stronger commitment, hence enticing members to participate more actively and contribute more generously, however. Skepticism remains about the value in being part of such demanding religious groups as members are often. Expected to make costly sacrifices furthermore, critics question the exclusivity of this feature to religion, when other forms of commitment like nationality could play a similar role. They argue that there's no exceptional evolutionary benefit to religion, though it's argued that factors like religious rituals and their systems of reward and punishment could promote increased cooperation within the group. While religion's influence on fitness is yet to be thoroughly explored, there are arguments supporting the health benefits of religion like extended lifespan, improved health, resilience during tough times, and enhanced psychological well-being, all of which are, however, fiercely debated. Some academics suggest that the development of language could be a result of significant social transformation that unlocked a genetic potential for linguistic creativity that had hitherto been latent. This aligns with the ritual CPS evolution theory, which views rituals as costly yet honest signals that enhance the reliability of language communication. Such theorists claim that this latent symbolic capacity can even be seen in chimpanzees and bonobos, who seldom utilize it in their natural habitat. They reject the idea of an abrupt mutation leading to the development of language, arguing that a very specific social structure, one that can maintain high levels of public accountability and trust, must have developed before or in tandem with language to establish reliance on words as an evolutionarily stable strategy. 
The animistic belief system of early humans, assigning spiritual essence to their surroundings, could also serve as a mechanism to ensure reliability in communication, acting as an intrinsic and instant verification tool.